Okay, welcome back to the Curious Entrepreneurs podcast. Here with me, Alex Hughes, and my co-host, Sam Squire. And we've got a guest in the studio today. Um, Charlie is from Metro Bank, but we're going to allow him to introduce himself first. So, welcome. Thank you. How would you go about introducing yourself? Um, so, yeah, I'm Charlie Hanson. I work at Metro Bank uh, in Peterborough. My job title is local business manager. Um, so a bit about me, um, so I've been in banking for about five and a half years, um, but really got a passion for uh, essentially helping young people develop more from themselves. So my background, I've not got like a, a not like a sob story, but you know what I mean? I've not got like a, a bad background, um, in terms of how I was brought up, but through my own kind of fault, I didn't work hard at school. So mm -hmm. the qualifications that I got, I didn't really see the importance of, you know, working hard, getting good results, that kind of stuff. So when I look back, people often say, like, what would I regret? And I wouldn't regret not working because I wouldn't be where I am today mm. if I didn't do it. But I think if I would tell myself something, it'd be give it 100%. Although you don't want to do it, although you don't enjoy doing it, it will pay dividends if you do it. Mm. But that doesn't mean if you don't do it, you then can't make something of, of yourself after. And I think that's the most important thing. Um, so yeah, I've been in banking for five and a half years, started as a cashier, kind of worked my way up, um, from there. It's been a very steep learning journey. I had to learn a lot about myself, personal brand. That's a big thing. How you kind of liaise with key stakeholders, that kind of stuff to get to a position where you can kind of demonstrate a value, if that makes sense, because everybody has value. Mm. But if you're not good at not talking yourself up, but if you can't put on show what you have to offer, you know, people can't see it and it's harder for them to buy into you. Um, but yeah, that's a, a little bit about me. If you mm. want me to go into specifics, feel yeah, free to. Yeah, no, sure we will. We'll deep dive, don't worry. Yeah, <laughs> yeah no, I've, so as always, we always start with the same question. So what what sparked your curiosity about getting into banking in the first place? So banking and kind of finance was always something that I wanted to go into. When I was about 13, 14, Investment banking was where I wanted to go. Always oh, thought, you know what, you know, make loads of money, go into the sector. It could be really cool, you know, working in London, work hard, play hard, all that kind of stuff. Mm. You know, what a lot of people probably looked and think, you know, that's kind of like the dream lifestyle. Um, and then obviously through not working, it's what I, I didn't realize until I came out of school. On the other side, it was like, okay, cool, you need to go to like one of the top universities, get a first, that kind of stuff. So that was where my interest in kind of banking and finance started. Um, and it was more through misfortune that I ended up going into the retail side of banking, if that makes sense. So because that was always the investment side was what I wanted to do, yeah. kind of glitzy, glam side of, of banking. Um, so I left school and my parents were basically like, you need to get a job. You're doing our head in. Um, so we had, you, you obviously get a long time when you leave school. Honestly. Everyone, else had, everyone else had gone to uni right. and, uh, and I was just at home. And my dad w was supportive and he was like, yeah, cool, it's fine, like, chill. And my mum was like, no, like, you need to go out and get a job, like, you're taking up, like, too much time in the house. I was like, cool, <laughs> no worries. So mum put an application in for me uh, to John Lewis, stock management. I did the interviews for that and that kind of bought me a bit of time. Um, but the whole time I was there, yeah, cause, you know, it's not a job where you'd ever really want to see yourself doing it forever. Yeah. You know, it, it's one of those things where, okay, cool get a bit of money, either fund yourself to go learn a new skill or, you know, something like that, take the, the next step in your journey. Mm -hmm. And the whole time I was there, it pushed me more to think, what am I going to do next? Mm. You know, what? I don't want to be here longer than I have to be. And I, I need to find a way out. I've not got good A-levels. I only just passed three of them. Um, I've not got a degree. There's, there's nothing that I can really demonstrate to an employer that's a tick. I just need to try and get an interview or something like that. Um, and then through people that I knew, um, there was somebody in Metro Bank that was like, look, we're recruiting cashiers. It's an entry level role. Feel free to apply if you want to apply. I thought, cool, I've got nothing to lose. And basically, um, when I had a conversation with him, he was like, the good thing about Metro is, and this is what I love, they will try and recruit from the bottom and, hire and promote up. So if they're recruiting a new manager position, they'll promote somebody from like customer service representative right. to assistant store manager, and yeah. they'll backfill that CSR role. And so people are getting the progression as they go up. Nice. Obviously, you kind of get to um, the more senior positions and then it's like, okay, you need a little bit of experience. If there's not the talent in the bank. You've got to go external, that kind of stuff. Mm. But that's very much the premise of it. And that's where I kind of came into my kind of fortune, really, which was I was able to do well, work hard, get my head down, and then work up those tiers yeah. um, over the last few years. Um, but, yeah, so that's, that's what kind of my... It. <clears throat> yeah, that's so what sparked my... I really relate to this. So I, I, I went to... So bit like you in the sense that 
I left school obviously with no grades or anything mm. like that, and I just worked. Right, so you just you just work. But there was one point in my career where I saw a company, and I walked into this building, and I was like, I just want to be here. Yeah. I don't care what I'm doing because you've seen the progression is, of people, yeah, and I did yeah, the yeah. same thing, and I literally. Because my work, because I was hardworking, and because I was good with people, and you know, I, I was engaging with my managers, and I was listening, I was you know, trying, basically just trying, gets you far enough, right? Yeah. Um, and then I worked my way through that organization. So I, I think that there's, there's a lot to be said for that. You know, mm-hmm. actually, what you're saying there is your grades, even the three that you did have. Yeah. Did they help you get that position? Right. No, they didn't matter. But yeah, yeah, you yeah. putting yourself out of your comfort zone having that conversation, try and then persuade them to say, I'm the guy. Uh, was it, could, you, could you maybe share how you felt about going to that interview with Mentor Bank and, and how you felt afterwards? Uh, yeah, so it's one of those things, and I, I mean, I'll never forget it. So I had to go to London, which for me was the dream anyway. I was like, oh, okay, cool. Like, and then we did all our training at London. But um, it was obviously nerve-wracking because the only interviews I'd done previously was when I was working part-time as a lifeguard when I was at school. And then... Um, was John Lewis, which, because it was never going to be, I was never hung up on the job anyway. It didn't matter to me. There's no pressure. Yeah, yeah so there's no pressure. It's like, okay, if I don't get it, you know, I'll just chill at home a bit longer. Yeah, but I, yeah. I can tick a box to say I've applied for a job. I've gone for an interview. Do you know what I mean? It's okay, mum. I'm yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> I'm, I'm doing what I can to, <laughs> to appease you. But yeah, this one, I was like, look, this could be the start of my future. I need to do well. And I think there were three sides to it. So you've, not, you've got your like competency questions. So they ask you a lot about customer service. And again, this is what I love about Metro. So they'll hire you based on your ability to like serve people and your, your attitude. So we say, um, we hire for attitude, train for skill. Um, nice. And they will provide all the training you need to do the roles, which is incredible. So yeah. for people without a background, you know, in finance, banking, anything like that, you can still go into it. If that's where you want to go, you can still go into it. Um, but so there's competency questions all based on customer service, which being at John Lewis helped a lot. Um, but then you've got to do a role play. So they'll sit you down and the role play is around like, banking. And uh, so if anyone's applying to a, a role in uh, Metro Bank, you're going to get an insight to what the, what the interview <laughs> process is going to be like. Um, you've got a role play and I'll say, oh, you know, um, you've got a customer maybe like kicking off over X, Y, and Z. This is, they basically give you the background and then it's like, okay, cool. We're going to role play it. So you've then got to deal with the customer um, and demonstrate your, your customer service skills. Um, and the f- I think I think there were the two sections actually. I don't think there was three, um, but yeah, like the nerves with that because like, role play is so foreign to you. And you the idea mm. of doing something that's fake, but also very yeah. real because it's an interview at the same time. You're like, how can you do this? And it feels so unnatural. <laughs> um, but yeah, so and because and I knew there was a lot riding on it, there wasn't really anything else. I had my eyes, and this was like the first role that had come up yeah. since leaving John Lewis. Because what I actually did, I left John Lewis without like a role to go to. I was kind of like, this is it. And I was kind of in between and I was looking at, okay, do I do like a personal training qualification, which I then did after, um, because I was just trying to find a route into something. I love fitness. I'm passionate about health, all that kind of stuff. Um, and and it's interesting when I look at what my interests are, it all, it, it all like evolves around people and like helping people. Mm -hmm. So whether it's banking, you know, servicing my customers, that kind of stuff, but also personal training, like there's a big thing around people, like strong mind, strong body, like a lot of people suffer, myself included. I remember when I was at school, this is on a, on a side tangent, right, yeah. um, kind of growing up and because I wasn't the most academic um, and I went to quite a good school and, and there was so much competition around and everyone was always like comparing everything. So whether it's pe- you know, people comparing how much money their parents had or, or whatever, or like grades, I didn't really fit into any of those categories and it's quite easy to get quite low self-esteem and think, oh, you know, I, I can't compare myself to these people because they're going to Oxford, Cambridge. You know, I'm struggling to get a pass at you know, my A-levels and just about doing okay in my GCSEs. Um, and what I found through that was then sports. And that's why I devoted all my time to sports at school because it gave me like an escape. But I felt so good doing it. And so I did my marathon kayaking and all that kind of stuff that I went to. Yeah. And so I did something called devices to Westminster twice. But the, the kind of um, training and preparation you had to do for that Like, it was so intense on one level. So we've had, like, 27 miles on, like, a weekend. Um, And and the race was 125 over four days. But I just just fell in love with that whole side of things. And that developed my character more than anything else because it taught me commitment, first of all. Mm. Because once I started it, no one was letting me back out. My coach was phenomenal. Mm. Um, There'd be times where, like, honestly, you get, like, 
10 miles down when you first start and your arms are aching, you know, you're absolutely knackered. And you're like, I just want to throw in the towel. I can't do it. Mm. And like, here come, it give you some gels, give you a bit of a pep talk. It goes, I'm not picking you up. You're going. It goes, and if you call me again, be like, you want to stop whatever, I'm not coming. And so you're literally stuck there and you're in twos as well. So it's you and your partner, but yeah. it's, it was so tough. Um, but that taught me more. And I think that and something called CCF combined cadet force, I learned a lot about leadership and that kind of stuff there. And those two things gave me the people skills and the confidence that I then got today, which then helped me in the interviews going forward. It wasn't anything to do with academics. I'm, I'm sure there's not one employer that would look at my CV and think, you know what? He's going to be a top candidate. <laughs> that, that's just the way it is. But the if, character. Yeah. And if, and if you can get an interview, that's then how you come across matters more. Um, and it's, yeah, I, I've got something else to say. So the jobs market as well, how that's shifting, that's another, obviously another conversation. Yeah. But I think that's quite an exciting space as well because a lot of employers are now moving away from saying we need a degree, yeah. which I think is fantastic for anybody that wants to apply for kind of top roles or, or that kind of stuff and particularly grad roles and that kind of stuff or where they've not got to get a minimum 2-1, they're like, whatever degree you've got, apply. And then they'll interview you because there's so much you know, talent that isn't taken on. The vacancies because, are crazy right now. I mean, yeah, just... and, and that's the thing. And, and people, I mean, when I speak to my business customers, for example, yeah. the one thing you're all struggling with is hiring. Yeah. Getting good talent and keeping it. Because there's so many jobs out there. People are just chopping and changing, chopping and changing. Mm, so That's where we come in. I'll, I'll come back to the, econ the economic yeah. side of this conversation, but I think there's yes. probably something on the sport and the, the, the mindset side of things that's probably worth unpacking first. Yeah, it was, uh, that's really insightful, actually, what you say about... I can empathise with that, for sure. And y I think when you were speaking, he'd, he'd get on really well with Lewis. 100%. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah. Um, yeah, one of our one of entrepreneurs. Yeah, you'll you'll he, meet him at the... Yeah, yeah, we'll meet oh, him. Good, he's yeah, speaking. Yeah. yeah, yeah, nice. Um, he he done, like, similar stuff in regards to that, and he believes, actually, through the... It was, like... Um, a dragon boat. Dragon boat. It was a dragon. Oh. Yeah, GB. Mad. Yeah. yeah so you'd tough. you'd yeah, get on really tough. well. We'll introduce yeah, yeah. you. To, but I'm, I'm also curious. So you didn't just do like that. That you also set up. C is it? Yeah, CA Fitness. Yeah, yeah. So I'm interested in regards to. So yeah, like, you're not. Thing. Yeah, so, you're not just. Well, I guess you can <laughs> elaborate on it. But like, yeah. I'm interested to to find out the entrepreneurial side of you. Yeah. As well. So. That's it. I should have known you're going to always like bring this side of stuff up. Um, but yeah, so basically over lockdown, and it was funny. So how CA Fitness was kind of created. So it was originally me and one of my mates, right? So he was at uni, he was at Leicester, and he was studying physics. And at the time he was there, he was like, Charlie, like, I don't know what I want to do career wise. And I was kind of still establishing myself in banking, that kind of stuff. But there was a lot of there was still a lot of headroom for me to progress and that kind of stuff. And I was like, okay, cool. I've not got the time just yet to do my PT qualifications, which was something I kind of thought, you know what, I want to do this at some point. Um, and oh, we had a couple of drinks. It was March 2018. And uh, how, how it... Best how business ideas. And we were chatting, yeah, we had a couple of drinks. <laughs> like, we were playing FIFA, like that kind yeah. of stuff. And uh, and then we were just chatting, like just chatting about life as you do, like all that kind of stuff. And he was saying, I don't know what to do. And we were both really into into fitness. And I based up the business on the basis that I was like, cool, when you leave uni, I said, I can put money into it, but I don't have the time to do the qualification myself and to run it. Mm. So the original plan was he was going to leave uni, um, do his PT qualification, go into that. Anyway, fantastically for him, he ended up getting a really good job at BA, um, BAE um, when he left uni. Um, and so he's, he didn't need to kind of come into that. So it's essentially just myself in the business now. Um, he's still a director, but not a shareholder. Um, and in during COVID actually, that provided the prime time for me to think, actually, you know what, I'm going to take on additional qualification. You know, everyone was kind of at home. There was not a lot going on. I had yeah. more kind of time to do that and, and invest into that. So, and because it was based from home, I didn't have to go to London like every single session. So a lot of it was done via Zoom. Mm. Amazing. So I was doing kind of every other weekend, we had Zoom calls to go through all the material, that kind of stuff. And then what was nice as well. So I don't know if you remember, I think it was, uh, because I think it was 2021, 2020. Oh, time goes so quickly. Yeah, like it's since all, it's yeah, mad. It's all a blur, isn't it? Yeah. But I remember there was a time where they basically said, for educational purposes, you can meet again. Um, and so because PT come under that educational side, we were able to use a gym in London. Um, it was Gymbox. Um, in, I think it was the one near Bank, actually. Right. And so we had full use of the facility. And that's where we would do like a lot of our um, practical sessions and that kind of stuff, which was really, really cool. Um, and then... 
when you're doing something educational, you're allowed to stay in hotels as well. So I booked a hotel the night before. So really quite nice. A lot of convenience. Like, yeah, 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 yeah. So <laughs> it, it was really nice. And, but when you've been kind of pent up so long, yeah, yeah, yeah. it was nice to just go, almost go, like, go back to normal life. Mm. Um, and so I did that. And it's very much a side hustle, you know. Um, I've, I've literally got a couple of clients. Um, but it's one of those things where if people want help with it, I'll, I'll do it. But I don't go crazy on the marketing side yeah. of it. You've got it's, that it's very much there, yeah. yeah it's very much another string to the bow and if something happened i was made redundant you know cool that's fine you know i've got something else i can then go and do and pick up and take forward um but ever since i've you know i, I was young i always wanted to have my own business as well and i think yeah i, I really enjoy banking and i think the dream still would be one day just to work for myself mm. solely whether it's down the pt route who knows yeah. Well, um, both. We'll, we'll see what but but yeah I know so many people that do both um, I, I'm a big advocate for it mm. man like you know a lot of it like you have a job and you have your side hustle like mm. I had a job before I had a job and ran my side hustle at the same time I think it's a really good thing to do yeah I'm, I'm curious about the your relationship with educating yourself yeah. this time versus school yeah, yeah. You, you said like you didn't give 100% oh, I hated but education at school but then yeah. But this, this is, time, but this yeah. is the thing. So at school, and this is my personality type, and I, people will be the fact, anything that I'm forced to do, yeah. I won't do. I can't, I can't deal with being put into a box and saying you have to conform to X, Y, and Z, yeah. particularly if it doesn't make sense. And to me, school doesn't make a lot of sense. Sounds like an entrepreneur to me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and to me, school just did not make a lot of sense. It's like you need to know like X, Y, and Z. Yeah. None of it's going to help you. I then got into banking, and I knew nothing because. All of the maths and the finance you get taught at school isn't relevant. Scientific. You know, you have like PSHE, I think it was called, or, or whatever. Mm. And, you know, they still don't teach you anything. You know, it's meant to be like the more like real life side to, yeah. to school, but you still don't learn anything. You've got sex education, but that's about it. Yeah. You know, nothing else adds any value to you. And we, we had some good speakers come in and, and they were actually really good because they kind of shared their experience. I remember one, um, they got a drink driver and basically who'd killed somebody. Um, oh. but, and basically they told their story. Um, and But it, it was quite a good point because you've got a lot of immature now adults who've just learned to drive. You remember Also love going to parties. Yeah, exactly. Like that kind of stuff, really useful. Um, but yeah, I'm not a fan of, can I say that? Like school per se. It's fine. Um, but like I don't, I, don't think it, I don't think it necessarily sets you up for success in the best way that it could. Yeah. I think they could do a lot more to make you a more round individual and shape you for the world of work. Because mm -hmm. I think a lot of people as well think, okay, cool, you know, I've got really good academics and then they almost expect thing opportunities to be given to them because then they've not got the mindset to go with it. And then they fall short and they're like, oh, you know, I've applied to like all of these jobs, but none of them have hired me, but I've got a first from Oxford. And it's like, oh, like, woe is me. And it's like, sorry. Not ready for mm. the interview. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're yeah. like, yeah. Look, look on the inside. And if, and if genuinely you can say, I've done everything I can do, fine, but keep knocking on doors. And actually, I've got a mate who I look up to enormously because he left uni. And oh, I remember it was uh, summer 2021, I think, or 2020, really hot summer. And he went in a suit to central London and was just posting his CV around to loads of accounting firms because he wanted to go into account. And he wasn't going to apply for a job just to do a job. He was like, this is what I want to do. I want to set my career up. And he like spent the whole day going to hand out hundreds of CVs literally knocking on doors just trying to get Good, in front of the right play. people yeah and now he's working i think for one of the top 10 accounting firms nice. um and he actually just got flown out of south africa first class to go sit like, go meet a client and we were talking about that it is mad That's awesome. um but it goes to show like you've just got to keep knocking sometimes on those doors like it will come the right opportunity will come but if you give up it's never going to come mm -hmm. so it, it's one of those things but yeah so i think finding something you enjoy it then becomes a pleasure to learn and so what I found was if from my own training, I enjoyed like watching loads of YouTube videos, all that kind of stuff. And that also taught me a lot about motivation and discipline as well, because the content you ingest, again, forms who you are. If you watch a lot of lazy television, that will, it absorbs you, but you are kind of what you, what you take in. Um, and that's whether, whether it's habits, whether it's what you watch, what you listen to and the people you're around, like all of that will contribute to who you are as a person. And that's where a lot of people can get quite lazy. And I think, if you've got a peer group where everyone's kind of settled and everyone's like, oh, yes, all right, don't worry, you know, your monthly salary like covers all your bills. You're like, okay, but yeah. are you ever going to grow out of that capacity? And a lot of people also don't necessarily want to see you grow because they're comfortable where they are. Mm. The old mirror and comes up. Yeah, 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 exactly. Yeah. <laughs> and, and when they start seeing someone do well, it highlights what they will see as their own inadequacies. 
but one person's success isn't another person's and so you shouldn't compare but as humans we do right you know I go back to what I was saying before when I was at school like you can pay yourself to other people you want to fit in it's human nature but and that high, that's highlighted when you've got somebody else, you know, doing something that you kind of look and you think, oh, I wanted to do that. And then sometimes maybe you got in a relationship and then, you know, your perspective changed. You know, you decide, actually, you know what, I want to raise a family instead. That's fine. So don't compare yourself to someone that's single and wants to devote their whole life to their career because you're not in the same boat. Um, but yeah, so. Yeah, great. <laughs> good awareness. Yeah, very good awareness. Isn't it? I'm interested in, like you said earlier about the, the thing that s- surrounds like what you love doing is helping people obviously you've worked your way out from cashier to now like business yeah local business manager yeah. manager i'm interested in like yeah there's so much training internally and obviously just be, through being in those roles where it can grow you as a person but there must be something within you that's helped one that pathway mm. become what it is but also something within you intrinsically that loves working with people so like what what's like the most what's the what's the most effective way to build um connection with people but then to manage those relationships that's a great question so in terms of kind of building relationships a big thing for me was just showing willing at the start you know when you've not got qualifications or something like that how can you add value and the way I kind of saw that with my boss at the time, who was fantastic in supporting me, and, and I've been very lucky with the leaders that I've had at Metro Bank. Um, and it's just a case of like, something would go wrong, for example. So we, back in the day, we used to be open eight to eight. And so I'd say I'd start at seven for, uh, quarter past seven for an early shift. So I'd finish at 3.45. I might be due to finish at 3.45, a business account would walk in. And we wouldn't have, you know, the, the wait times had been messed up or whatever. So the customer had been told to come back in at a set time, but we didn't have anyone free to see them. So you've got the customer expectation. I'm clocking off. And my store manager will come to me and be like, Charlie, I need a favour. I'm like, no problem at all. Business accounts take two hours end to end to open. Wow. I'd sit and do it. A lot of the time he'd call me up when people called in sick or whatever on my day off. Charlie, can you come and do this? No problem at all. And it's just things like that showing willing. Mm-hmm. And then you build that trust. And then from that trust, I then got given more responsibility. It was like, okay, Charlie, can you look after this side of the business for me? You know, whether it's MPS net promoter score, how can we drive this? Like, how can we look at what we're doing to ensure, you know, volume of responses, all this kind of stuff. And so you get other areas and you can, and then you can start to demonstrate tangible change from those extra responsibilities, which then people are like, okay, cool. He switched on, he understands it. And you also learn more about how the business works because you're then exposed to another side of the business that you weren't exposed to before. And then organizations always have succession planning, right? So if somebody leaves, who's going to take the next role? no one wants to be left kind of high and dry if somebody leaves you know puts in their notice for whatever reason and so build it so kind of starting a relationship and building it kind of goes there and what was the other one was it in relation to in, in relation them? to managing relationships so yeah. that 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 might be both internally with other colleagues but also external like people that you're having nice. to actually manage yeah. Yeah. yeah and i think what helped me on my journey so being surrounded by a lot of or typically a lot of older people because being young, so I, I was 19 when I started working at Metro Bank, and I'll never forget because when I look at how I was then to how I am now, two very different people. Because because <laughs> yeah. naturally you're, you're immature, right? So, and when I was a cashier, so we just opened the store, and so we didn't have a big existing customer base in Peterborough because we just opened the store. So in terms of people paying in cash and you know doing teller transactions, it wasn't that many. But account opening was very busy, so I was bored for quite a lot of the day. Because we, we get a couple of transactions at the very beginning and that was it. Mm. So I try and occupy my time. So I go around just trying to chat to people. And I still manage to pull me in. I was like, Charlie, what are you doing? I'm like, I've got nothing to do. And he goes, yeah, but you're distracting everybody else. Like, no one else is getting any work done because you're just going, because I'm, I'm a people person. Yeah, I love the social interaction. And he's like, you can't be doing that. And so then he'd give me like tasks to do and, and things like that. And I was, I was like, okay, cool. And, um, and the other local business manager who I work with now, James, um, See, he was my line manager um, for, for quite a long period of time and he was phenomenal. So he had the first conversation with me about personal brand and he literally sat me down. He's like, all right, Charlie, everything you do is either going to strengthen your brand or weaken it. So th- have a good hard think about how you want people to perceive you. And he was like, because this is what people see at the moment. And I was like, oh, well, <laughs> I, was like, I, I was like, that's not good. And I knew it as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I was like, okay. And he goes, so think about how you want to be perceived mm-hmm. and think about how every action that you, every action you take is that going to create that image or is it going to detract from it? And I was like, okay, cool. 
And that has stuck with me ever since. And it's the advice I give to every single young person is, think about the person you want to be, how you want to be perceived by people. Mm. And the conversations that you have, the words you speak and the things you do, what, how is that going to affect that? Is it going to be for good or for bad? Yeah. Um, and that's kind of how you manage the relationships as well. And kind of growing in maturity, you then learn as well, just to think a bit more before you speak. A lot of the time, you know, you kind of make a joke because you come from the like the school background yeah, yeah. and everything is a laugh and a joke, right? And, you know, that's what you, you say things and you have quite extreme banter and then you come to the workplace. No, you can't say that. Mm. You know, there's a HR team. <laughs> you know, you know all, all that kind of like, yeah. yes, that's funny then, but that's not funny now. Yeah. You know, or, or, you know, okay, fine, it might be funny, but this isn't the environment in which to have that conversation or to go, this is a professional environment. Mm. And distinguishing between the two is so important because that will make or, or break your brand. Um, and so when you've then got senior stakeholders coming in, they'll often sit and watch. So my boss's boss used to come in, obviously visit store, and he would just sit and observe. Mm. It used to be the most terrifying thing ever because you knew what he was doing as well. And it's just like, I have to be seen to do the, like, do the right thing. Mm. But then got me thinking like, you don't just want to do that when he's there. Absolutely. You want to do it all the time. Nice. Because that's then your brand. Because then what you, once your brand is strong, you then have your leaders. So for example, Assad, who was a store manager at the time, and Steve as the local director, would then go and speak to um, Steve's boss and be like, oh, Charlie's doing X, Y, and Z. He's done all this good stuff. And so I don't even have to then have that interaction. It's being had for me. And it's like, he's going to be a future leader and all that kind of stuff. And then they want to support you in that. So then because you've got their buy-in, they're then on the same page as you. So with development, it's all your responsibility, right? So I always say to people who want to progress, no one wants it more than you. Yeah. You know, man, so for Metrobank, we do a lot of observations and that kind of stuff to get signed off for different levels of the different roles that you have, right? And it's like the manager's, their first thought isn't your response, uh, isn't your progression, because why does that matter to them? They've got to do whole loads of stuff. They've got to run the floor, manage all the customers, manage the colleagues, lunches, risk, all that kind of stuff. Making sure like the tills have all the right cash in, all that kind of stuff. Mm. Sitting with you for an observation is probably going to be fairly low on their list of priorities, mm. and they're going to have stuff that you know the store manager wants them to do, or you know the regional team want them to do on top of that. And so it's how can you align your um, priority so they they want to invest in you mm -hmm. the first thing is by brand it's not a case of what they can do for you it's what you can do for them mm -hmm. um, so how can you serve them in the role that you do and that will get their buy and then they'll want to help you mm -hmm. and then all of a sudden they'll be like look Charlie like let's get you signed off to like the next tier of CSR let's get you to expert get you some more money blah 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 and the other thing I used to do I'd then be a bit cheeky they'd be, they'd be like okay we've got this business here for you to see and depending on if it's a comp what we deem as a complex business you would get it would contribute towards observation. You get five observations and you get more money because you get deemed as expert. Mm -hmm. And um, they're like, oh, you've got this business. I'm like, okay, cool. Tell me about it. They're like, two directors, two shareholders, overseas activity, all this kind of stuff. I'm like, nice. Are you, are you observing me? Oh, a little bit busy. That's fine. When you're free, I'll see the customer. And then nice. I'm like, oh. And they're like, ah. Oh. I'm like, so I'm like, it's fine. Tell the customer however long it's going to take you to be free to observe me with that customer. Uh, uh, and then they're nice. like, okay. And then all of a sudden they're like, okay, let's do it now. <laughs> and then you get those observations and that's what I try and say like take ownership of your development because it's you that's responsible for it but you've got that relationship with them with the stakeholders where you can be a bit cheeky and you can be like look you know I want this I work hard for you but you need to help me in this and they're like you know what then that's even trade then because it's not just a case of you from the get-go saying what can you do for me you've given something back you continue to give something back and then it's like look it's almost like you're calling in a debt in a way yeah it's, it's like, emotional yeah, currency ab absolutely yeah um, and, and there's there's a lot of that. Um, and, so, and so I think the biggest thing you can do is just serve other people in the role that you do. And that, and that will be the platform at which you build relationships and then develop from there. There were two, um, part, there were two parts of that, though, I heard. There was the willingness, mm, which yeah. is the, 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 the bit that no one talks about, really, is yeah. over-delivering. You're, you're, you're doing yeah. extra two hours work here. You're, you're turning up early. You're doing that. Not, you know, not everyone can do that. Yeah. Um, because yeah, yeah. their life circumstances, they might be a, they might be an unpaid carer, yeah. they, you know, depending on their circumstance. But the other side of it, actually, what you covered was around expertise and saying actually, you know, I think you talked about the, the MPS yeah. uh, project. Well, that's not time related. They, they could take that back with them home yeah. and do that stuff. So it's about it's essentially showing willingness, but in multiple ways. Yeah, and, and being front of mind mm -hmm. in that. So obviously we just spoke about kind of the willingness and that kind of bit about you to to get stuff done. Yeah, 
yeah, yeah. I like I like that in terms of progression. Yeah, and yeah. So we can literally just because now we're rolling, we can just go with the flow. Yeah, um. So like, do you think that how how entrepreneurial do you think you are? Is there ever a right answer? I, d- I don't know. I think <laughs> what I have some idea, like I wouldn't say I'm naturally creative, right? So I think with entrepreneurship, I think creativity is a big thing. And so I think the more creative you are, I think the more entrepreneurial you'll be because you'll have a lot more ideas of things, you know, you might want to take to market or, you know, things you want to do. Or I think you'll also find it easier to identify a gap in a market in a certain area mm. and then capitalize on it. I'm not creative. Um, that that's not my skill set. However, I think oh, yeah, it's a difficult one because I, I think what I'd be able to do is pitch. So, like on Dragon's Den, when people go and do a pitch, I think I'd be able to do a pitch. Mm. I wouldn't necessarily be able to come up with a concept behind the business, right. you know, and like, and I, I could obviously, you know, provide guidance in terms of like a USP or, or something like that. But I probably wouldn't back myself to be like some super entrepreneur. To be perfectly honest. Mm. But what has helped me is being a relationship manager for local businesses, seeing how loads of different businesses operate. Because when I speak to all of my customers, you kind of pick out what works and what doesn't work. Okay. And so then when I get a new business, you know, look to come on board, or I meet someone at a networking event. And they're like, oh, let's go sit down, have a coffee, you know, for whatever reason, not happy with the bank, whatever. Mm. I'm like, yeah, cool. Tell me, tell me about your business. I'll start talking. And because I look after a wide blend of customers in terms of industries, I know little bits about a lot of industries. I'm like, okay, how do you find this? you know, this part of the role. So obviously yeah. going back to the recruitment challenge before, it'd be like, okay, you know, you've got 15 staff at the moment. How, like, are they, are they staying in, in role? Are they moving along? And they're like, oh, some of them have changed because they've got better pay elsewhere or whatever. Mm-hmm. I can't offer them the same like training as a larger company can. Mm-hmm. And so they've then kind of taken that experience from a small company, gone to a larger company, and then they're trying to backfill. But because of size of business, for example, they may not be able to pay the same as what a large company would yeah. pay or that kind of stuff. So, I, I think I'm quite good at providing advice and doing some coaching, but that's only because good coaching, you don't provide the solutions. You lead people to come to solutions. Mm. So you ask them a lot of questions to say, okay, cool. You know, what do you think the issue is in your business? And they'll start thinking about it because they know their business obviously a lot better than you do. Yeah. And they'll start kind of wearing around and be like, oh, well, I struggle with this. I struggle with that. But like, okay, how can you make that better? How can you work on that? And you probe them to think, do you know anyone that can support you with that? Mm. And you can kind of take it from there. And so you're, the idea of good coach, like, is you don't give them s- the solution because you're not the fountain of all knowledge. Yeah. You know, you don't have the answers. Right. But it's leading them round on a path where they can come to the idea and think, that's what I need to do. They have that light bulb moment and they're like, okay, cool. And then you've got a point of action and go, okay, cool. Now we know what we need to do. Let's create a plan on how we're going to achieve it and what time period you want to achieve it over mm. it's like okay cool put that in place they go away work on it have another catch up it's like okay how did you get on and then might be okay this didn't work because xyz okay cool we now know this is an issue is this something we can navigate or do we need to actually just change the whole plan completely mm. and focus on something else instead um so yeah i wouldn't say i'm like a crazy entrepreneur i'd love to say i am yeah. um but to be honest i would yeah I, i'm never going to be like the next like stephen bartlett or you know or, or someone like that um, but I think I, where I, my skill set does lie, I think is supporting businesses and providing advice and kind of matching people up with people in a local area and saying, look, like this isn't my area of expertise, but I know somebody who might be able to help you with this, or, you know, I know someone that could be a good mentor for you or, you know, that kind of stuff. Um, so yeah, that's, that's, that's probably the answer. I, nice. I bet the answer you wanted was, oh yeah, like I'd, I'd be a fantastic. No, I'm just curious, <laughs> man. I love, I love that you, you ask like you coach i love that i like because yeah, like, that's that's my bread and butter like yeah, when you start thing going, i love it at work is like with the newer colleagues as well that are literally starting where i started yeah and i'm like I, like ah oh, i do like i get so much satisfaction from it as well yeah. and um and like because you kind of you give them a bit of advice and sometimes like you, you've got to be a bit hard right so there's one colleague for example um who, who pretty much brand new into store and hasn't got a brand and his line manager basically being like try and think of your brand, like all this kind of stuff. And we were just having a chat like about business side of stuff. And he was telling me what, what he wanted to do. And I was like, okay, cool. I said, did the regional team know you? And he was like, no. Well, I said, have you spoken to the regional team? He goes, no. I said, well, have they, be, have they come to store whilst you've been here? And he was like, yes. I said, why haven't you spoken to them? Mm. And he goes, oh, well, you know, 
I can't even remember what his response was, but the typical response is normally like, oh, you know, like I'm just like a CSR or something like that. Why would they want to speak to me? Mm. I'm like, no, like they're interested in you because you're one of the, you're potentially one of the future leaders. Mm. I said, you, you don't think you're important now, but you can be, mm. but you need to build a relationship with them. So I was like, next time they come in, go and have a conversation. I said, it doesn't matter so much how it lands. Just start building rapport. Find out about them. What football team do they support? You know, mm. that kind of stuff. Build rapport on like a basic nice. level. Yeah. Get to know them as a person. And then the natural conversations will come. They'll say, yeah, you know, what, what do you want to do further down the line? Mm. And then they know what you want to do. And then they'll be on the store manager's back being like, okay, this person told me they want to you know, become an assistant store manager. How are you helping them in that development? Mm. Because the store manager in ASMs, one of their job roles is to develop the colleagues. And so it, it creates this kind of loop of accountability um and so yeah like just getting exposure to the right people as well helps massively mm. um but yeah so like coaching like you know, like that's yeah i love that as well and like see the satisfaction that comes from seeing them do well and like they're at, like seeing their attitude transform as well and they come back as well and they're like oh like i like i think completely differently now you're like amazing because mm. like, before it's very much because you, you you can only think how you know right you all a combination of your like experiences like conversations all that kind of stuff make you who you are mm. and so a lot of people their their vision will become quite narrow they you know they've got a very kind of narrow field of experience and kind of vision because of that and so they don't understand what to do or what to say in cer certain circumstances or, or they go down the route of oh i've been stung before because you know i tried to make a joke and it, it went down like a lead balloon and so now they just resort to not saying yeah, anything yeah. because they think it's better to protect themselves than to have a conversation and you want to kind of like break that barrier down and say no but just start basic. Mm. Just get to know them. You don't have to have some fancy conversation. You're not here to impress them from day one. Yeah. You know, this is a 10 year journey of your career, you know, even longer, mm. you know, just start building baby steps and it will come. And if you do that every single day, obviously like small actions over compound. a period of time, compound, exactly. Mm. So that that's, yeah, that that's an area that I love. Um, and I know obviously you do a lot of coaching yeah, man. Um, as Questions. well, but it's, it's so good, isn't it? Yeah, I'm, I'm interested. Like obviously now you're in a leadership role. Mm what provides a bigger impact the coaching so the questioning or you going straight direct and telling them like you know the knowledge and you're like yeah this is this is how we do things it you know what it really depends very rarely so unless someone's doing something like so far wrong from like a regulatory or policy point of view and I'm like, you can't do that. Yeah, yeah. Like, you need to do this because that is literally how the FCA yeah, tells yeah, us yeah. we need to, <laughs> to yeah, do it. Yeah, so like, yeah. you're gonna breach something. Um, but if it's just a case of like a conversation or whatever, you just telling someone how to do it, they're more likely to forget it. Whereas if they come up with it, if they get around to the solution themselves, they'll remember it. So more often than not, I will just ask questions. So I literally sat oh, with that. this guy for about an hour. And because um, there was something uh, i don't want to go into the internet this That's is this, this is actually a conversation because obviously, uh, obviously it's his development so i don't want to go yeah, too yeah, much cool. into it but there was some stuff that he was doing that because he's 18 like i was there you know I, yeah. I, okay i never did exactly that but like silly things that just kind of damage your brand and so i was asking i was like what made you do that and he goes i don't know i just didn't think i'm like but you're in a corporate environment why why weren't you like what made you think that was a good idea something must have said oh i'll do that mm. And he goes, there was nothing. I just didn't have anything to do. And I'm like, okay, you didn't have anything to do. What could you have done instead of what you did? Nice. That would add value to the business. And he goes, oh, I could have gone and spoken to a manager um, and seen what else I could do. I'm like, okay, cool. And how do you think the manager would then view you for doing that? Mm. Well, and I'm like, yeah, because what did you just do? It's like, pro like proactively trying to help. I was like, proactive, exactly. Mm. We want proactive people in the business that are going to go above and beyond to try and support not just take a paycheck every month and do the bare minimum. Yeah. And he was like, ah, oh, okay, I get it. I'm like, okay, cool. So when that happens again, w you know, when you've not got something to do, what are you going to do? He goes, yeah, like I'll go speak to one of the SMs or even my peers who may have like pending stuff that they need to do and try and take some workload off mm. them. I love Fantastic. that. Fantastic. And then you build team cohesion based off that because you've got team members supporting each other, not just thinking your work's your work, my work's my work. Mm. I can chill because I've not got any work. Now you help each other. We're all in this together. Ultimately, the customer is the bank's customer. It's not your individual customer, if that makes sense. And it's the same for me. Yes, I'm the face of the of Metro Bank to my customers. And so that is like my portfolio. But ultimately, it's the bank's customer. And I very often have to utilize the support teams in the bank to do stuff because I can't do everything on my own. Mm. But it's building that network around you to, to be able to facilitate all those things. Mm. And everyone works well together. Mm. The best outcome for the customer in the bank. 
Um, so, but yeah. <laughs> I love that. Seriously, that's, that's really in, inspiring to hear that that's happening mm. in organisations such as Metro Bank. And I think that from what you've, well, one, obviously, the discussions me and Alex have had with you guys, like, before, yeah. what we've got planned, which we can speak about shortly. And then just that, what you've opened up to us today, I think it's just amazing how you, one, you take that approach as a young leader. Yeah. And that I, I can now see how effective that pathway is for people if there's people like yourselves in positions where you're actually, instead of being direct, but you know the answer, you're yeah. asking the questions. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I love that. Yeah. So you've spoken about what you wish you would have done yeah. a little bit differently. What What do you want your life to look like? So like so you yeah. said like eighteen year old your eighteen year old yeah. self that became as a cashier. So what what's that been? Five and a half years? Yeah, just over five and a half years. So fast track five and a half years from now, yeah. what would you want to say to say you have achieved in your life or, or the person you want to be? So uh, that that's a great question because what I found as well is once you get so far down the journey, obviously your priorities change. So like your vision as an eighteen year old and your priorities as an 18-year-old aren't going to be the same priorities you've got yeah. turn 25. Yeah. Um, and I had a, a, almost like a, a little, not, it's obviously not a midlife crisis, but turning 25, I was like, oh, I'm now closer to 30 than I am <laughs> 20. Like, this is terrifying. Like, yeah. I, I'm, I'm now an adult. Do you know what I mean? Like, yeah. um, <laughs> And I was like, okay, cool. So originally my goal, so when I first joined the company, I was like, okay, by the age of 30, I want to be a local director. It's just Steve's role. Mm-hmm. And I'm looking, I'm like, okay, cool. That'd be more than achievable. I'm like, that, that goal's now now got to a point where okay it's not stretching enough like that that would come around sooner like if that's that's not even necessarily the role that i want to take because the thing is now what i found is like there's so many different avenues you can go down because in my role i'm almost like a jack of all trades so you help with customers with everything you you can then look to specialize or whatever and so now i'm just trying to figure out you know what do I want to do? And I think as long as I'm servicing customers and there's customers at the end of it and I'm adding value to them, mm. to be honest, like I'm happy with that. Like, okay, cool. You know, the the job title appears to the, to the vanity of everybody, right? So having director in your title would be fantastic. But I kind of think, okay, going straight to a director role, is that going to actually make that much of a difference to me? Or is it, or in terms of the value that I add to people, is it better to learn a bit more? And then, so like go into like a more specialist role or, or go into like commercial team. So deal with like larger businesses, for example, um, be a relationship manager there or, or, or something like that. And then move across into like a director role or, yeah. or, or something like that. So you can then, you've got more experience and more value you can add to customers. And so I don't, I don't actually know. And, and, and I was saying to Steve the other day, because he was, he was like, what, what does the next like few years look for you? Um, and I was like, I don't actually know the first time in my career because you know you set a goal and you almost don't expect it to happen mm. because like 19 year old me no banking experience starting as a cashier I was like oh. you know I say I, I want to be an LD by 30 but I'm like I had no banking experience I was like that might not happen right like I could find that banking is not for me and like all this kind of stuff so you, you kind of set it thinking that's a stretching target but then thinking ultimately like if I got halfway there, you'd be kind of happy. <laughs> do, yeah, you, do you know yeah, what I mean? Yeah. Like, um, or you could look to do something else or, or whatever. Um, but I think the, the biggest thing for me is working on my character and who I am as a person, to be honest, and how I can support others. Mm. And so, because that will contribute to the role that I do going forward. And so I reckon, I'll, you know, I'll probably stay with Metrobank for a long while yet because the, the company and the support that I get is phenomenal. But getting an interview if I can work on my character and again, it's all, it's all about the approach, you know, always being willing being able to put your hand up when you make a mistake. Like, again, that's a big thing. And if you speak to Steve, he'll be like, yeah, you know, Charlie made loads of mistakes, but Steve gave me the freedom to make a load of mistakes in the first place mm. because he knows that I can't be put into a box. If you just say, we're not gonna let you do that because you're not ready. I'm just going to do it anyway. Yeah, yeah. Or I'll try and do it, not tell you make a mistake and then I'll be there like ah, like how, how do I cover this up so he gave me the freedom to fail which is so important to learn yeah. um, then I learned from the mistake and I'll go to him I'm like oh, I did this and he goes okay cool what we can do to fix it mm. and we go from there and so I learned and that's how I learned a lot in such a short period of time as well because I was able to make my own mistakes learn from them and I'm like okay cool like, that's not the best way to do things mm. but you only make that mistake once 
because then it, when you're also working with higher stakeholders like a director or whatever you also feel more embarrassed when you make a mistake because like, oh like it means more if that makes sense like yeah. making a mistake as a cashier is kind of like, oh whatever you know it, it's not that big of a deal mm. um but the higher up you get like the mistakes could be more catastrophic yeah. um and also the stakeholders that are then being influenced or you're trying to influence are then larger as well mm. so the effect to career is also greater yeah 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 um but yeah so i, th I think mm -hmm. the, the biggest thing for me is just building my character and i think what i want to do more of is things like being an inspired to ignite champion doing more stuff in the local community to help people in my age bracket, I granted I'm now kind of out of that now, 25, mm -hmm. um, but young people embark on the journey, whatever they want to achieve and, and help them realise that it is it is there. You know, you can make a success of it, but people might not know the support networks they've got, you know, the, pe the right people to talk to. And the world works by people who you know, right? Mm. A, lo a lot of jobs. So the only reason I got into Metro Bank was because I knew somebody who then said, I apply to Metro Bank. Mm. it's just one of those things and again when i apply for the management role because um i spent so much time building my brand it was kind of it was expected that i was gonna be the next person to fill the role because i put all that work in i had a good relationship with the managers and it was like okay cool this is the opportunity for charlie to develop himself further mm. and so when the role came up it's like okay charlie like the roles come up like apply mm. kind of job done um and so who you know is so important. And so working with local communities and, and helping young people get access to the knowledge that other entrepreneurs have is so important. And then we'll see, because like things like TikTok now, right? So I think it's, the time we're in now is literally the season for young entrepreneurs. Like it's never been easier for a young person to create a business. And I love some of the entrepreneurs that you guys have. Yeah, like some of the stuff they do is just wicked. Yeah. And, um, and, but I look at them, like, it goes back to me not being creative. I'm like, I'd have never thought to have like, done something like that or like, or just seeing like how they've managed to scale something that was a hobby. Mm. And now like, you know, they're doing decent revenue. Mm. And it's like, ah, oh. <laughs> you know, yeah, yeah. And, and that's the satisfaction that comes with it. And, and my joy very much comes from like other people succeeding it's mm. it's not a case of you know what can i achieve because what i found previously is like okay cool you know you, you can work really really hard but your successes will never make you happy like genuinely will never make you happy mm. because anything that's kind of like self-orientated like because you will always fail right there's always things where you look at yourself and like something happens and you look back at why did that happen it's a culmination of your decisions yeah you know we're, we're not perfect people and you'll never, if you're just trying to do stuff for yourself, either you'll end up annoying everybody and like people just won't want to do business with you. They won't want to be friends with you, all that kind of stuff, because mm. everything is about you. Mm. But when you give back, you see other people happy and then the people around you are happy and that affects your happiness. Yeah, yeah. And so, and, and that is in the vibe that you have with people around you and that rubs off on you. And so you've then got a group of like your peer group, everyone's then happy rather than like just you sitting there, you know, on a million quids yeah, or whatever. Yeah, yeah. And everyone else is there like, this guy's a dick or whatever <laughs> yeah, you know yeah. because you've shafted everyone in the process yeah. you know to try and get there um so yeah nice man I, I i liked one thing i love about that is that sometimes you don't know what you want that to look like but actually yeah. if you know what you want to be as a person Everything i think will yeah it would yeah. just you'll become a magnet i, and, I truly yeah. believe in and that th the biggest thing you can do and the biggest advice that i would give anybody is work on your personal attributes because Beyond qualifications, people will hire you based on your attributes. So, okay, fine. You might need a degree to get into a certain role. But once you're in role, when you start going for internal promotions, your qualifications mean nothing. It's based on your personal brand and the quality of work that you do. And so your attributes, your discipline, you know, commitment to the, you know, the company and working hard, like your attention to detail, like all that kind of stuff, like that's going to be what's so important for your progression, not the fact you've got a first at Oxford. That'll get you in the door, potentially, yeah, yeah. if it's a big company. But that's not going to make you CEO. Yeah. Banging. <laughs> so many, so many good moments. So I think to wrap up then, like I'm really so excited for obviously we've kind of announced it online already, but like we're launching in Peterborough yeah, yeah. at Metro Bank in a few weeks time. We've got, I've got some of the young people I work with coming on being a panel. We've got, people from industry like local people from industry yeah. then we're going to do some connections and stuff like that so i'm proper buzzing yeah. for that um and obviously just to, to continue like you being an ignite champion is just massive for yeah. the young people we work with 
and we're going to speak about how, obviously how what that looks like yeah, going forwards as well yeah. um so i just want to say basically <clears throat> how grateful i am for one being able to meet you personally but also like the association and the support i've had from metro as well yeah, um so yeah so how can people find charlie and yeah. his personal brand. <laughs> so, yeah, so um, you can obviously like pop into to Metro Bank, obviously, and people come and find me. You know, I'm on LinkedIn. Um, I, I'm on Instagram. Like, if you want to follow me on Instagram, like, all that kind of stuff. Like, I, mm-hmm. I'm quite easy to access. Or, you know, um, if people come like via you, obviously get my mobile number or, or yeah. whatever. Like, that, that's all fine as well. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, I'm happy for you to share whatever people need to come and come and have a chat. Mm-hmm. Um, and again, like, if people want to just have a chat about personal brand like even like mentoring or, or something like that um you know i don't just work monday to friday like yes that's the banking role but outside of this this is your personal development i'm more than happy, like weekends and stuff saturday sundays i'm more than happy to come have a chat mm-hmm. meet for a coffee grab a beer something like that whatever whatever people fancy Legend. um and yeah we, we, we can go from there but yeah cool fairly accessible sweet well i'll whack the links uh for charlie's social handles and stuff like down uh, in the comments but this has been one of my favourite episodes. Uh, and I don't just say I was going to say, yeah. No, I don't just say that either. No, I swear to God, I don't. So, um, so much wisdom that you've shared. So much inspiration I've taken from it as well. And I'm sure listeners and viewers have. So, if you have enjoyed this podcast, please um, subscribe. Because it makes a massive difference as, as to reach. We were in the top 20% um, watched on Spotify. So, let's keep that momentum going. Um, and I'll catch you guys very soon. See you soon.